those that want to stay and listen to me waffle on and talk complete and utter bollocks, a bit like last weekend, welcome. So yeah, um, trundled up there with Rob, early doors, uh, Saturday morning. I know some of the lads were up there Friday on the Razzle Dazzle. Um, Paul C singing karaoke to himself, to the barman. Um, hopefully someone's got maybe some little bit of footage of that or they can they can tell the story better because I wasn't there. But what I heard on the Saturday, he sounded like a right old knees up. Um, the problem that I've got with going up, because Rob did say, oh, do you want to go up on the Friday, is I do that at Blackpool and because I'm getting old, I'm a daytime drinker, I'm not a nighttime drinker, I can't do it, I need I need my sleep. So I can drink, you know, from like lunchtime until eight, nine o'clock at night, and that's it then, I'm done. What I can't do is do the, the opposite way around and go out at seven and drink till X amount in the morning, and then you've got to get up for the event. So it just, just fucking fucks you up. I say, I'm getting too old now for that. So uh, they're all up there having a good old uh, knees up. So. From what I can remember, from what I can remember, I'll do in the, I say, from as best I can recall, Mr. Love, Pete Love was there, obviously, Rob and myself. So Pete Love, and he had a few of his, a few of his mates. He did introduce me. They're not tubers, I think they're just Pete's mates. So nice to meet them guys anyway. Um, we then had had the the northern, the northern tubers, the northern tuber contingent. Which included um, Rob, Robin, no, oh. it's Robin, I think it's Robin. I can't remember where he's from, is he from Switzerland or something like that? Shit, I always forget his name. Um, so he was there with Gruss, Gruss Newton. <laughs> Funny chat with Russ and Art Gay Club, absolutely brilliant. Um, Mr. Ret Mr. Soulfunk himself, Matt Soulfunk Retro. Um, Paul on the back wheel. Um, Paul, Big Daddy C, fucking, I know, honestly, that guy kills me. I had a, again, a, a very interesting conversation. <laughs> well, I say conversation, it's more like a job interview. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to come to that. But, um, say, Big Daddy C was there at Black, uh, Blackpool, uh, um, Play Expo. I've I better missed someone out from their group, haven't I? Um, fuck. Seen Kieran, Game Boys are awesome. Uh, Jake the Snake, um, was it Jake Tiller? I think that's his mates. Mate, say so I was awesome. Jake the Snake. Um, who else was there? I've seen um, Adam from Retro Collect. Nice to see him. He's one game away from the full Game Boy Loose Cart Collection. Um, who else was there? Obviously Dal, Retro Godfather, Scratch Master Dal himself, Timbo, Bad Fuck Up, and Chris CGM Moore. CGM Retro rather turned up. Nice to see um, them them guys again. I think they weren't they were they didn't go to our K club. They didn't go to watch the uh, the Derby Wolves uh, Aston Villa. Um, who else did I see? What other tubers? Oh, um, my gamer XP. Nice to meet him again. Wayne Rapper Gar. Gonna be someone I've missed out. Bloody no, it is. Um, oh, what's his name? <clears throat> oh, his little lad. He's we've seen him in the in the queue. You know who you got. You're gonna hopefully you'll comment. Um, yeah, and years and years ago he sort of uh, met me. And I videoed him afterwards, and I sort of said, "Is that your little lad from before?" He said, "Yeah." He goes, "Not so little now, is he?" I said, "No." And this his dad's massive. He's a fucking mountain, but he's a lovely guy. Like I. I've, I Mr. Some, I'm sure it's Mr. Something. He always has like a Pac-Man um, as his um, sort of icon, his, his avatar. Uh, but his lad, lad was there again, and I've, I've gone to the queue, I think, to get um, to give Jay a ticket and stuff. And his lad shouted at me, and I didn't hear him because it's just it's just a, it was just a cacophony of noise. And off his old man, choo choo. I was like, yeah, all right. And I said, all right. And he went, pointed to his lad. I said, what that? A little lad, he went, Yeah, he's not so little now. He, he like I said, but he, he isn't, he's getting big. Um, it's good to meet them. There must have been someone out, and I, I'm just gonna feel really, really bad about it. Um, but yeah, they changed it up, they changed it up a little bit because <laughs> you've seen the in the raw footage anyway. I went for something to eat, 
you know, try and set ourselves up for the day over at the Weatherspoons. Come back over, probably about, probably got to the actual um, exhibition hall about 20 to 10. And there were like a few people outside. And you hear it on the video, I was like, I said to Rob, I said, fuck, I hope they haven't moved it to a different entrance or something like that. Walk in, and the queue's all inside. They pushed the queue all inside. And it was just snaking, which probably is a fair way of doing it. Because before we went outside, it was it was kind of like a bit of a free-for-all after it got past the barriers. So I'm, I'm guessing people probably complained about the queuing. And do you know what? I was speaking to Andy Brown about this. And he sort of said they have to, they have to do the bag checks now for obvious reasons, unfortunately. Um, but even given that, he said something daft like they've got 2,000 people in, in, in like 20 minutes half an hour or something like you know whatever it was but yeah his team's amazing for that size of that event but the event itself can't fault it you know it is what it is it's an expo so you had all your your current stuff you had loads of indie stuff going on massive pinball section and and your arcade machines i mean the pinball stuff I'm, fortuitously enough i managed to have a, get a game on one or two of them um, one that I'd never played before was just a Transformers based on the first not the first movie, but the first Michael Bay movie. And I was like, fucking on it for, I don't know, it must have been about 20 minutes. I just couldn't, I was, I was just getting multi balls and everything. I was doing really, really well on it. I was actually amazed myself. Um, and when I finally died and I turned around, there was two people queuing behind me, friend. And when I looked around again, there, there was just queues for each and every pinball table. Um, we had the Adams Family one where you get shocked. Because I love Adam's family, Andy Hug. It's got Adam's family. Um, but it had a little section. I didn't realise it was all like cordoned off. But I mean, I must have just walked through the entrance bit of it. And they had an Adam's family in the corner there that wasn't being played on. And I went to walk up to it, and the guy went, "Oh, hello, sir. We're doing a competition in this little area. I thought, oh, no wonder no one's on it. It's like free quid to enter. I thought, nah, that'll be all right. Um, but they had loads of pinball tables. But the, tr the trouble is, you're standing around waiting and queuing. <sighs> And I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to Arcade Club later, famous last words, I'll be able to play some games there. Like that happened. It happened a little bit, but not as much. Because um, it wasn't it wasn't that kind of an event, but again, I'll come to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, like, trader-wise, you know, if you're looking there to buy stuff, I thought it was a good little selection. It really was. You your usual big hitters, retro plushies, uh, sore thumbs, the smaller guys are there. Um, my mate Jason who's get gaming i'll link his facebook channel so he's, he's a guy who's set up a shop bricks and mortar dudley way i think it is again links will be down below go and check him out him and his dad all uh, see them at the events really nice people i'll always chat to you you know um he had some he had some atari um, yeah he had some jaguar games i want to get a few more jag games but i don't know i don't mind them loose carts but he had them box complete um, and I said I was just a bit, I was just a bit mindful of of, um, of the spends. That's all. Um, so I was like, oh, I have to come back. What else is going on there? They had all the board games, um, you know, for them into board games and the card games, the trading card games and stuff like that. So it, it's, I've said this before. I think each and every year it's getting closer and closer to being that sort of um, Comic Con side of it. But I do like the fact that Andy's still keeping the arcade games there. He's still keeping the retro the bulk of the traders as, as retro gamers and I think you know I'd say it's just just what what you're going there for um, swings around about but for me it's always about the meetup it's always about you know meeting people having a chat having a, having a laugh having the crack taking the piss bit of banter can't beat it can't beat it it's, you know it's just like meeting up with your old mates each time and that that's not a bad thing is it at all um, so anything notable happened at the expo? So we left, Rob and me left about three o'clock. I, I mean, we were sat down. Oh, fucking hell, ads, ads, um, and uh, the Amiga lads, they were there. I knew there was fucking someone. Oh, he cracks me up, man. He was telling, he was telling us about showing us his room, and then he was, he, everything he does is in the 80s. I said, you are Mr. 80s. He's even got an old XR3i or something, he was sort of saying to me. Really good to sit down and just, like I said, we, we, it was me, Ads, um, Jay, Raz, 
Uh, me, Raz, Jay, Dal. No, Dal wasn't there. Me, Raz, Jay, Ads, and Rob. Oh yeah, because Rob was flitting in that. So I, was, I remember because I remember going I have to get four points and then and a coffee. The coffee was for that. But Dal, Dal disappeared. So when we sat down at this point, Dal had disappeared. Um, so we'd all done what we wanted to do. Uh, and I say at three o'clock, you've got no chance of getting on any any machines. There's a lot of two, three people deep. Absolutely, forget about it. Um, so we're supping this. Oh fucking heart, is it? Because <laughs> when I'd, we're trying to get older people, and your signal's terrible because everyone's whacking the the mast. You know that that single um, relay point or the two relay points that they've got there. So it's not only impossible. Anyway, Pete Love managed to sort of say to me, "Oh, Raz is looking for you." Where are you? And I sort of said, oh, I'm near the bar. He goes, which one? I was like, what? I thought there's only one bar. So the one near Console Passion. We just got the food in this bar. So I'm sat there chatting there to Andy Brown. And then Raz comes up with a pint in his hand. So I finished chatting to Andy and speak to Raz. I said, where are you? He goes, oh, the bar on the other side. I said, well, there's a bar on the other side. Uh, what it is, it's like a little coffee cup, uh, coffee, cup uh, coffee wagon. But it had a real... Unbeknownst to me, Raz said it was beer, but it's real ale. So I was like, oh yeah, I love a fucking out. There, there was no queue there. There was a, a table that we uh, that we we, uh, we took over. But this beer, it's real ale, and it was like fucking alder alder flower or something like that, you know. Um, which I don't, I don't, yeah, you know, I can drink it. But I think I think I had like two two pints of it, or two or three pints maybe. Um, Jay had one and he was like, I can't drink that. And he went over to get, because he's a cider drinker, went over to do the one to get his, his Magnus. Um, but it was a weekend of, of very bad decisions in, <laughs> in terms of pints and beers that were, that were picked. But there's no other beer on tap. You know, um, I'm not, not paying £4 a bottle. And I said the older flower stuff was like, I think, four quid a pint, which is a pint, not a half a pint. Um, so yeah, it's all right. It was it was just about drinkable. The trouble with that is you can't have too much of it because it's so it's so rich. <clears throat> so anyway, at that point, I say we'd we'd um, we'd done the event. We'd walked the floor. Uh, time was getting on. I was just sort of said to Rob, "Look, you know, we can we can check in just after three. Shall we hit the bricks?" Jay, I think Jay had, had enough. He was obviously sort of thinking, "Well, like he, he, for whatever reason, because he's bought a dog." Told you not to do that. Obviously, money was a little bit sort of tight for him. The funds were a little bit tight. And he sort of said, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back anyway. <clears throat> There's nothing out here for me. You guys are going." Um, so we sort of left, if you like, um, and like, we were on the way to the hotel. And then Dal sort of texted, like, "Stu, where are you?" I'm like, "Mate, we fucking left." Because before we we left, Jay was trying to phone Dal. He texted him, sort of saying, "Look, no, I'm thinking we'll get the train. Might not the train because Dal lives in London." Um, but they were going to a train station together. <clears throat> Jay was like, can't get hold of him. Probably because it's a shit signal there. But we, I mean, it must have been at least an hour. We, I think we sat down at about two o'clock. It must have been at least an hour of trying him. Uh, so, Dad, we didn't, we didn't forget you, mate. We, was just off, we couldn't find you. Um, so, yeah, we just called it quits about three o'clock or so. Three hour three, something like that. Because um, I was looking... Did have scout round the arcades looking for Alex and John from John's Arcade, but you know, just didn't see them. Like I said in the previous vid, the thing with um, the expo, it is it's that big that you can easily miss people. I thought, well, a lot. I know I'm going to see Alex later anyway, so I don't mind, you know. Um, and then, but in the back of my mind, it's like the expo's done now. I'm looking to the to 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 the arcade club later. So we get to a village hotel, lovely hotel. Never stayed in a village hotel before. It is really nice, uh, not 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 cheap, but it's the only one that I could get. Yeah, and bruh, bruh. Um, so we got checked in there, shit shout and shave as you do. Um, Rob said, "Oh, we'll have a we'll have a pint downstairs while we wait for the Lord of Taxi." So that sound good idea. We we'll go downstairs. And I say they had these they had put on put on tap. I was like, "Fuck it, I'll put on tap, have it." But a couple of cheeky, cheeky pounds on the bandit, but didn't win anything. None of us can play the bandit, but I always do that. So it's just a thing we used to, me and my brother used to do. Um, we used to go up the town on the razzle dazzle. We used to have a cheeky pound in the bandit. Yeah, because you might win just a cheeky pound, but it nothing. But we did get two Budweiser glasses. 
Um, so, <clears throat> we had this pint, and obviously what I did, I took the, the glass back to the room, <clears throat> but I left it a little bit in the bottom, so as I'm walking past through the foyer, it looks like I'm going to my room with my drink, <clears throat> and obviously just squirreled the glass away. And as I come back downstairs, which, which was this one, which was that first one, so I said to Rob, I'm having that fucking glass. So I come downstairs, and as I walk back through the foyer, I said to them, oh, how do we get a taxi? She said, oh, I'll, I'll order you one. I said, okay. I said, it's done. It's like, what? I've got like a little button, just press it. Like, I said, what's, how long is it? She said, oh, about 10, 15 minutes. Great. Go for to see Rob. He, he just, just put two more pints down. So I had to go back to the lady and say, well, can you cancel it? When we're halfway through the pint, I'll come back and let you know. So the other one had this on it, so I said to Rob, look, you're going to have to take this up to the room now. So we did that, we got in this taxi, and this guy, he's taking the fucking piss. Because we didn't know rough, we didn't know, I knew from the map perspective, when I could sort of see when I was looking to book the hotel, where we were. So arcade club's like here, the Premier Inn's there, and the village is that side, almost like triangulated, if that makes sense. So I had a rough idea, you know, in terms of... You know, low cow where we were, but I didn't really understand distances. Didn't know the distance. So we got in this fucking taxi and um, said to the guy, Arcade Club. Duck Club? Duck Club? It's like, no, Arcade Club, mate. Like Rob saying it, because I'm sat in the back and thinking, here we fucking go. So he drives that, Rob gives him a rough street. So we go, and I can see some of the stuff, some of the streets look familiar, because it's, it's, they're only tiny little streets. And I'm like, He's just driving around and I've seen the off licence on the corner and he went straight past it and turned the other the way and I went to said to Rob, I said, hang on a minute, I'd have pulled my, I got it up on my phone, I said, look, go to this street here. And as he came back round again, again, I've seen the off licence on the corner, I said, Rob, we're getting out of the lights and it was like £3.20. So it was £2.90 and when we got in there, we were half a mile away, because we didn't know where we were, half a mile away. So I got out, just giving them money and Rob was like, Oh, he didn't know. I said, Robbie's taking the piss, mate. He said, he didn't want just the £2.90. He wanted to drive us around to get about a fiver's worth out of us. I said, fuck that. Fucking Robin. Fucking. Let's just say he wasn't English. I thought, fuck you. So we got out and just walked across the road. Literally, round the corner. I said, there it is, there. Duck Club? Duck Club? Robbie's like, no, what's, what's Duck Club? He's like, Strip Club. He's like, Prob no, it's an arcade. I said, arcade. Like, he... he Obviously, just taking a piss, but fuck that. Not having any of that. So, we get in there, and um, I say it's been, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. Um, I'd got in, I'd got in, I'd been to Arcade Club just after they'd moved to the new lo location, so I hadn't seen it for ages. Um, you know, the first the first time it opened, it had a lot of power cut and stuff like that. But now, downstairs, as you go in, on the right hand side, there's a little shop there, and that's where you can sort of go in and pay and you know, you've got all, all kind of merchandise and sweets for the kids. It's really well, really well done. And they had me a little badge, which is awesome. So Andy, you know, Andy, obviously Andy Palmer, set that with the UK backers. I'm not a UK backer, um, but I know Alex, and obviously he sent me the, the, the email and stuff like that. So, yeah, pre-booked the tickets because I thought I'm not missing this. This is not, you know... Alex is a really good mate of mine. I thought I've got to be there to support him and, and him and Whitney. Never met Whitney before, but you know, I want to support them. Um, so yeah, we sort of prepaid. I know there was a little bit of um and R and Raz was a bit worried about getting in because I think he had some problems with PayPal. I think that got sorted because Pete Love had had someone dropped out from his crew. So it all worked out in the end. Um, I know Russ and, and then a lot, I think they, they rocked up and managed to get in anyway. But what I would probably say, and I I think Alex mentioned it, I can't remember if he's in a post or if he did a video, I think it might have been a post. But it was it was definitely more of a party atmosphere. I know it's I want an atmosphere. I love a party with a happy atmosphere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds a bit daft, like Russ Abbott. Party, I love a party with a happy atmosphere. But it was it was just like that. It just like that. Um but it was, it was just a party atmosphere. So at said arcade club. I'll try and remember people's there because at this point I'm getting a little bit fuzzy. 
because Rob said to me um, on the Sunday, he went, about obviously the sort of arcade club, he said, oh yeah, you, well you, you put a bit away in the day, hadn't you? And I, I said, I hadn't actually. For me, I hadn't. So I had three, three pints, three pints of the fucking elderberry, elderflower beer. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Hey, all that Raz fucking got. And uh, a pissy little bottle of fucking Carlsberg, which is vile. So I hadn't had that much at all. And then the two, I said the main thing was the two pints in the hotel. Um, but my God, was it hot in there. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a lot of sweaty people all over the place. Um, so two floors. Weirdly enough, the second floor is before the first floor because it's just the way, obviously, Andy had managed to secure different floors in this building. So the second floor is where the, you know, the reveal for Skyskipper was. That's where, where's it gone? On the back of here, there was like a slight reduction for, for UK backers. So I paid the ticket, I'm not, keep I'm not a UK backer, sadly. Um, so I kind of tended to hang out now and there because I actually get slightly cheaper drinks. Um, but it was warm. So get in there, see my man Daz, Co Jones, Cajonas de Laurel, uh, Tom Tom. How are we doing, Tom? Did they get the job? <laughs> What's the fucking insane? Well, I can remember that, that conversation. Fuck you know. Craig's here again. He was doing his stealth mode. I didn't even know he was there. He was sat down speaking to Andy initially. Talking business. Um, Luke. And this is a weird thing, because I could remember his fucking channel name when I was half pissed. Now I can't remember it when I'm only a quarter pissed. Um, Base Invader. Never met Luke before. Honestly, he had the right idea. He just come up and just said hello, and just he was a great, great guy. Awesome to meet. Awesome to meet Luke. Um, Beeps, Brian, and his little lad Elliot. Really good to meet. I tell you what, Brian is just like. I don't know why Brian doesn't make videos. I don't know why you're not in front of the camera, Brian. Because you've got a, a great personality. He just hit it off straight away. Um, yeah, I don't know why you're not in front of the cam. You've got no qualms whatsoever, other than you're a Man United fan. But you, there's a few of them on the tubes, sadly. Um, so good. To, I'm trying to think of people I hadn't met before, uh, other than obviously the, the, the sort of notable people that, that come over from the states. Um, well, Mr. Retro Dave, Mr. Retro Dave Nintendo was there, obviously. Um, always a good time. Always good to chat to Dave. I think I might have put a, a fly in the ointment with his room. Well, not a fly in the ointment. Maybe, maybe, maybe made him have a rethink, perhaps, because I just sort of him, well, look, I've seen your picks, but why have you done that? And what I would, wouldn't you consider doing this, that, and the other? And I think hopefully it might be me for the better. I don't know. It's Dave's room. Dave can do what he likes with it. I'm sure it'll turn out absolutely outstanding anyway. No matter what Dave does. Because he's that kind of guy. And he'll always be top notch. Um, I'm going to miss someone out. I know I am. and I'll, I'll have to come back to it. But obviously Alex. Alex rocked up eventually. I was like, where is he? And it transpires. He locked himself in the bog. Um, but yeah. Alex is, is a top guy. Um... I think for what he's done, and I think he's said this before, what that little PCB, where it's took him in the world, it's, it's amazing, an amazing story. It's, it's got to be made into a movie. Someone's got to pick that up. If, 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 if not Nintendo themselves. I'm not sure you, who you get to play Alex, though. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any, any actors' names. So from that, obviously, there was Whitney. Um, and his family, because I was sort of stood at the side heckling as I normally do because I'm a gobby twat. Um, I would advise you to go and see Retro Dave's uh, Nintendo's video of said uh, reveal. I did, I said, I, I recorded it, but for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I moved all the stuff across from my phone because it was beeping at me, sort of saying, like, low on space for, but I'll get them moved because obviously, well, after I finished. The next day and yesterday, 
obviously with the WhatsApp group, it's pinging pictures back and forward all over the place. So I, I, I definitely fucking know this is what's pissing me off. So I don't like using phones to record stuff like that because it never never turns out well for me. And I don't know what it's doing with them. I swear to fucking God I copied them to my PC. Now I'm not a daft lad, obviously I'm working on IT, so I'm not what I'm doing, but I don't know what it had done with them. I don't know if it, it just said it had moved them, but hadn't, and it had failed to copy them. But when I look back, there was a few pictures that I thought I'd copied over that hadn't copied over. So, yeah, it's just a bit shit. Um, so, I so I don't like using phones. I've got some pictures. You'll see the pictures anyway in the raw footage. Um, but there was a, there was a, a couple, uh, a lad and his missus, that was, I was, I was near the pool table, just chatting to them. I had a really f funny time with them, you know, just, just having a laugh and a giggle. She had a like a John's Arcade t-shirt on. Let's just say that the the Johns on the arcade were quite um, quite out well out there, um, and I, I did sort of say to them what the names were because I can't. Obviously I'm never going to remember because I was you know, two sheets to the wind. And I did show them a pass, and she sort of said, "Oh, you've got, you've got a sub." Now I did have a sub, but it looks like it's some Russian guy, so maybe they've subbed and then subbed for this guy's shit. So I don't blame them. But if you do manage to see this, and if you know anything, but. Thanks, it was really, it was, it was just a funny little giggle, like I said, laughing a giggle with her and, her and a chap. And obviously, John. Hey guys, welcome to the Blast Furnace. Or not. Um, but John was, yeah, I think John, I think, I mentioned this to Alex. I always have this, and it's probably the wrong assumption, but some of the American guys or some of the American channels you see, I think, did he put it on? Is it an act? Is it, are they real, how they are on the camera? I don't know. But John is, is that way he's exactly how he is on camera and i like that i think he's very much akin to a, what i would class as a uk tuba we, we have, you, what you see is what you get uh, and i like that about him he was dead down to earth um and obviously whitney whitney's super intelligent man that's that's all i can say he's, he's so switched on the ball and his, his wife and his daughter are lovely i was chatting to them probably more than than, than him actually because they're to the side and I just thought, you know, they should be part of this journey because after they come over to the UK and stuff like that. So it's really nice to meet them. Like I say, really lovely uh, people. Um, then I went up to the other floor and I bumped into John again. That's mainly where I was, I was speaking to him. And Alex reminded me, well, I, I knew about the conversation, but he reminded me what the guy's name was. And there was this Dutch guy. It's like, yeah, I think he must have been fucking Mark but he is next door neighbour or something. I mean, I know that, um, isn't it? Statistically, the Dutch are the tallest nation in the world, and it, it's got to be true because this guy was. I mean, I'm six foot one ish, six foot one, six foot two ish, sort of around that area, and he must have been a <laughs> fucking six seven, six eight, massive guy, really, really nice, mad as a fucking hat. At, and Alex mentioned, Oh, did you get a picture of Patrick? I know, is that that Dutch guy? He said, Yes, yeah. I fucking he's mad as a box of frogs. He was, but he was there chatting with John and, and uh, Alex must have been there as well. Um, but it was insane. But everyone was dripping with sweat. You could just see beads of sweat on everybody because it was just so hot. You used to drink more beer to cool down. I'm sure there's someone that's a man of Tony Temple. Someone stood at the table, the pool table in front of where the, uh, the skyscraper was going to be um, revealed. And um, everyone's milling about and stuff like that. And I went up and I went, You've got the coolest name ever. And this off to Tony looked at me and went I could just sit on his face like the fuck are you <laughs> who are you Cause I think what we forget is when you you're on the you, you know when you're on the tubes and people put you on the tubes like Alex does he probably doesn't realize how much exposure he's getting he does a lot of um articles and stuff like that which you know within that community he's, he's very well known but you know from a, a, a YouTube perspective probably slightly less so but I, I just, I, when, I, when I hear his name, I always think he's like some sort of, you know, secret, um, MI5 secret agent. Yeah, the name's Temple, Tony Temple. I just think it's a wicked name. Uh, and I said that to Alex ages ago, uh, when I think he did his uh, room tour video with him, didn't he? Because he's a Missile Command champion or something, world, world record holder for Missile Command. Um, so I have to freaking Tony out, um, no doubt probably thinking who is this pissed up fucking twat um 
sort of started chatting to him about uh, the raid in France. I think he was the one that was sort of scaling the sort of heady heights of the uh, unstable building and stuff like that. And it was it was, it was mental. He said it was it was it was mental, mate. It was a stuff there. So I said to him, "What was the one thing that you wanted to say?" And I can't remember what he said the machine's name was because it was right in the corner. And he gave me like a rough guide to how far it was. And I think Alex caught caught that picture because he's doing this kind of action. <laughs> it's like, um, but yeah, it was, it's just just such a good time. It, it was literally like a party atmosphere. Um, it's Alpha One, the big guy, um, Olivia, I think his name is. So hello to him, and again, he was just like, oh, who are you? Um, so it probably freaked him out. Because I'm guessing a lot of the UK backers, you see, you don't see people's faces, you just see names. Whereas on YouTube, especially if you do videos and you make videos and you watch videos, you can sort of relate and, you know, spot people, what they look like and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think I freaked a few UK backers out from that end. But uh, in terms of playing games, a little bit, played a few. Um, not many, because I say, it's, I think Tom Tom. Tom King Arthur sort of had, uh, he put a post online about it. So I said, oh, I didn't play as many games as I thought. I said, mate, I didn't. I've, I only played any, but it's not bad. I could play arcade games any time. I can't meet the guys and have a chat and have a social and have a drink any time, can I? So I make the most of it. It's like anything. It's just a point. It's a focal point, isn't it? That's how I see it anyway. But what a fantastic, absolutely fantastic day and night. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything out of note. <clears throat> I had a, had a job interview f from, from Tom, um, myself and Paul, Big Daddy C. And Tom, honestly, you've got nothing to worry about, mate. I think he had um, a few nerves. It's up to, I think he got there about two o'clock. So he'd been on the, he'd, he'd been on the pop. Um, and obviously he's seen all these people turn up that he's, he kind of recognises. And he just... Yeah, I had a bit of a wobble, but it's all good, man. It's all good. Don't worry about it. But he was, it was. <laughs> we were just talk because we all work in IT, um, and I sort of said to him, "Look, I'm jack of all trades, master of none." What does that mean? Well, you know, I do a bit. I'm not going to bore you with details, but I said I do a bit of this, or, all that, and he was like, "Well, what, 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 what do you mean by that? How much?" Because I've seen IT as well, and I, 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 it got to the point where I just looked at Paul and I looked at Tom. And I think I just walked away because I thought I can't do this conversation, <laughs> and then he started. Grilling Paul after, yeah, but it's, it's all good, Tom. Don't worry about it. I, I'm guessing, like you say, it's just you're very nervous or very, you know, very drunk. Oh, we're all very drunk. I, I can't remember much of the conversation other than I thought, did I just get a job interview there? Because it felt like I was being interviewed. Um, but yeah, it's great to meet Tom King Arthur. Uh, you even had Jim Bagley or or, um, or Jeff as his. Of the wise known by me, he was serving beer. I mean, got to get served by Jim Bagley at, at RK Club. Awesome, Craig, Craig Turner from Revival. He was there with um, the Beast, Dave Perry. Nice to see Dave again. Didn't really speak too much to us. I had a good good chat with, with Craig. Um, but yeah, um, check out again links down below to Revival twenty eighteen. Is it called, what is it called Generation X? Um, that's shaping up to be really good. Twice the size. Uh, I had a good, good chat with Craig about that actually. So um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm liking where he's taking Revival. That house. On Craig's missus, she's always nice to say hello to. She walked past and went, hello! And she went, looked at me like, huh? And I think it dawned and he went, oh that's two. She was, oh hello. I didn't know who it was. Um, but yeah. Freaked her out as well. The <laughs> same time, it's not just you. I freaked. I freaked loads of people out. I think that was it. I can't remember any. There must have been. There's going to be somebody that I've forgotten, and I'm going to feel really, really shit about not not mentioning their names. And I'm going to be like, okay, so don't just don't talk about me then if you're not, not bothered. And it's not intentional. So Russ was there. Paul C was there. Uh, his other mate Paul in the back wheel was there. Um, Oh, there's got to be someone I've forgotten. I'm trying to go through, racking my very addled brain of anyone I may have missed. I do apologise, guys. But all I can say is, if you weren't there, I think you missed out on a, on a great party. It was a party. And Alex, 
Whitney and all the all the guys that behind Sky Skipper did a fantastic, fantastic, um, you know, uh, event. Really good. Andy Palmer, I think, you know, from just from uh, location wise, it really it just sealed it. It was heaving, absolutely fucking heaving. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable, Jeff. And I say it goes down literally. If I had a list, it'd be second, second place. Not not because it's inferior, just because the first proper tuba meal it has to it, and it was a, a, a belter this is a very very close second um but yeah that's it i'm gonna fuck off now because i've been talking way too long it's probably a two-parter um check out all those guys that i mentioned and you know the sort of um facebook pages and, and upcoming events i knew i forget some more Cine steve steve um another london guy Great to meet you, mate, again. Uh, um, hogging Skyskipper, you bastard. Great to meet you, Steve. Top lad. Um, yeah, really good. Take it easy, YouTube. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.